the friends that I remember the best were the friends that I met when I was like two or three years old and went off to nursery school with them in kindergarten. We stayed friends, we're still friends. Joan Fair and Mary McDonough. Uh, there are people from that neighborhood that I haven't seen in uh, 50 years. And if I saw them today, I'm sure we would hug and kiss each other. We shared so much in, as, as children. Everybody was like everybody else's protector. Everybody's mother watched out for every child. And Was there crime? Not that I know of. If there was crime, I certainly wasn't let in on it. Nobody ever said, like, you know, anybody was... Well, who would rob from four people? I mean, they're really... Other poor people. No, we were all too poor. There wasn't anything to steal. They may have been like, if anything, well, we didn't even have kidnappings. Nobody wanted us. <laughs> Just another <laughs> hungry mouth. <laughs> but we had a great time. We loved school. We absolutely were good kids. We did our homework. We studied. My father told us every time we brought home a report card, he was very proud of us. And that one sentence, once a month from him, was amazing how much it meant to us. My mother always said, it doesn't matter what you get, just do your best. And unfortunately, I don't think I ever did my best, but I sort of knew that even if I had failed everything, my mother was gonna love me anyway. So we had a mixture there. I felt my father was proud of me because I had good marks, but I felt with my mom, I could have failed and she wasn't gonna love me one bit less. A very, very comfortable way for a child to grow up. So beautiful out here. This always reminds me of like the ideal place for us to talk because Nanny was such a beach person. Like to me, all my, my, my favorite memories of Nanny are at Rockaway, in her house. Do you remember Nanny meters. making up a song about Rockaway was a lovely place? No. She used to sing Rockaway was a lovely place to warm your hands and tan your face. Oh, Rockaway, what a lovely place. But going back to- To warm your hands? Warm your hands and tan your face. Well, when Nanny went to the beach, Sorry. oh, be careful, you almost caught your fingers. She, she would um, cover herself from head to toe because she, was, she would, would get such bad sunburns. I can remember sitting on Orchard Beach with her when she was a young woman, and she sat on the beach, well, like me right now, but her pants would be all the way to her ankles. She'd have socks on, and she'd have long sleeves and gloves on, on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> But they didn't have sunblock in those days, and she didn't, might have a big hat so on. So she wore the gloves to protect her hands from sunburn? Yeah. I remember her wearing those blackout glasses, you know, where they had the leather around. They were my sunblock. Uncle Jimmy's from the Air Force. Wow. And then she had on, like, a nose guard or a big nose of, uh, what's that white stuff, zinc oxide? Yep. And then she'd have, like, a veil and a hat that like, had a brim. <laughs> Sounds like she wore the bertha or whatever that thing is that yeah. the poor Muslim ladies wear. And that um, she'd be, and it had a chair with an umbrella attached to it, uh, came off the arm. It was always a low chair. And she could just stay out there all day. She loved the morning. Like I remember her getting up early before anybody would get to the beach and she'd be out there with a few of the, of the greats. In Rockaway with the, uh, the immersion heaters and all that crazy stuff that went on in those rooms, the cooking and the stoves that barely worked and the refrigerators. Were they ice boxes back then? Like just like the no, big, they, like the they precursor were, to they a were refrigerators, I but guess. They were always frozen, like you defrosted them. Oh, you had there. to defrost them, and they had like two burner stoves that you could cook on top of it. But when I was little, we had one big community kitchen in a place called Redmond's. And everybody had a table, and they would, at the beginning of the summer, they'd go out and buy a big piece of oil cloth and cover their table with it. And that was nice, and it was fun. And my grandmother lived in that house, and she was always telling us to, you know, behave ourselves. And 
That was Katie Redmond's seat and that was Mrs. King's seat. So we didn't take the rockers that belonged to the old ladies on the porch. Now that I think about they it. Had their, it was like a hierarchy. They had their special Those seats. old ladies probably a lot younger than I am right now. But the men were not allowed to sit there at all. They had to sit on the side porch, which it was a little women's lib going on there. Wow, especially back in those days. Yes, but I guess that went on more than people realized, that men thought they were in charge, but women really were. Men went to work, women stayed home with the children, but women, in their own way, really were the bosses. My father didn't raise me at all. My mother did. He never questioned what she did or what she told us to do. But wasn't he like more of an unusual guy? Was he like... I think he was pretty much the, uh, the way most men were. You know what I want to like, uh, ask you about that I always found so fascinating? Was although there wasn't like... It's hard to say there wasn't racism. But then how the group stuck to each other and that they just like... You go to the Irish Beach Club and right next to it was the Italian Beach Club. And then, is that, am I remembering this correctly? Was it like That's how it was in the Bronx, I think. Right. But that it was just like so fascinating that, that everybody had their own groups and that for you, all those generations up until my generation became eligible for marriage, that people tried to really stay in the group, not just like the way Jews have to do it because it's a religion and a race, but that, that to have all this Irish Catholic blood, considering we well, came to this country as... When I, when I was young, long ago, it was very much Irish Catholic married Irish Catholic. And if you didn't marry a Catholic, you didn't get married in the church. You had to get married in the rectory. And I remember those weddings in the rectory because we lived next door. And it always seemed so sad to me that the bride in her beautiful dress didn't get to walk down the aisle. My uh, father, he came from a big family, but his best friends were his bro my mother's brothers, not his own brothers. He loved my Uncle Tommy more than anyone I know loves their brother. Those two were like, like the Corsican twins. I mean, they just really thought each other were perfect. And that helped very much in that family kind of thing when everybody had to go to my grandmother's on Sunday. Well, he knew my grandmother could be a little tough, but he also knew he was going to meet up with his, my Uncle George and, you know, Tommy and Jimmy, and those guys were his best buddies.